good evening, uh, colleagues. Um, we are meeting. Um, this is a, a special uh, meeting requested uh, to receive um, a presentation on the letter uh, from the president uh, that makes available up to 1,495 uh, members of the SANDF for utilization Recording by in the progress. Chief of the South African uh, Defense Force uh, as part of the SADC uh, mission for the period 15 July 2021 to 15 October uh, 2021. And the, the expected expenditure amounts to uh, 985 uh, million rand. Um, the letter was the 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 the, 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 the president, uh, President uh, Ramaphosa, uh, as the chief, uh, as the commander in chief submitted uh, the letter uh, to parliament uh, regarding the deployment uh, on the 23rd um, of uh, July. Um, <clears throat> the minister has indicated that she is running a bit late and uh, she is from another meeting and that she would be able to log in um, in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, in the premise, I thought that we should delay the meeting for about uh, 10 minutes or so until she uh, logs in so that um, she then uh, lead the presentation uh, on the letter uh, by the president, which will then of course be followed by the uh, briefing um, by the the chief of the South African Defense Force or uh, the or Lieutenant uh, General uh, Sanguini, uh, who is given the responsibility by the chief of the SNDF to uh, manage uh, the operations. Um, let me just check for purposes of, uh, uh, you know, checking. Uh, let me just check uh, attendance uh, for record. Just, but just before we do that, let me ask um, uh, Miss Jaya to flight the agenda uh, for the meeting. Right. Uh, <clears throat> the agenda is as is presented. Um, the meeting is uh, duly uh, constituted. Uh, can I confirm that, uh, Pat, uh, Ms. Jaya? Yes, Chip uh, Thank you very much. And then, um, uh, the agenda 
uh, is as is presented, this being an, an, an agent item. And um, can I check if um, you are happy with the agenda, if the agenda meets the approval of the committee? Chairperson, from my side, yes, I think uh, uh, I think the uh, uh, agenda certainly reflects the intention of the meeting. Um, so I will I will support the uh, approval and acceptance of the of the agenda. Thank you very much. And uh, Mr. Mare uh, moves. Any seconder? I second, honourable chair. Honourable Butler. Uh, Miss uh, Honourable Bartlett uh, seconds. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, are there any apologies, uh, uh, Ms. Jaya, are there any apologies on the side of the members? Uh, no, Chair, I didn't receive any apologies except for Ms. Lekwase who requests to be released at seven years, another meeting. Mr. who? Ms. Lekwase. Oh, Ms. Lekwase. She has ah. left, logged in already, but she requested that she has another meeting at seven. So okay. she requests to be released. All right. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, uh, on the side of the department, I've already uh, recorded the uh, apology of the minister who will be joining us shortly. Any other apology on the side of the department? Right, it doesn't look like there is any other apology on the side of the uh, department. All right, colleagues, there is a request uh, that we uh, uh, switch uh, our videos on uh, because the, the meeting is recorded live. Those who will be on this uh, platform uh, speaking, they are invited. Uh, to uh, put their uh, video on, all right? And then <clears throat> colleagues, so this is the, the, the agenda. Uh, let me just check who is in the meeting from the side of the department. Um, uh, who do I take? Let me just see. Uh, who's leading the delegation? Who is in the delegation from the department, from the side of the department? Chair, what I've, what I've seen is obviously the chief of the SNDF is on the platform and also CJ Ops. So I don't know if that was your intention to refer to the department. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I see, I see, no, 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 I hear you. Um, let me just welcome the Chief of the, uh, the National Defense Force and um, a special welcome to you, uh, General. All right, let me see. I think there is, might be a problem with the uh, connectivity, I don't know. And uh, they don't seem to be... Uh, you know, receiving audio. And Kabinde? All right. Good evening, sir. Okay. Hey, hey, it's good evening. Are you are you following the discussions? Yes, chair. Although it was going on and off, but I'm on now. Yeah, on now. I was trying to check um, who is uh, present on the side of of the department. I'm told that um, the chief of the defense uh, force and uh, is on the platform. Can you confirm that? 
I've seen uh, CJ up so far. I haven't seen uh, the chief. Maybe he's using another gadget. But let me phone and check, Chair, and come back to you. All right. I thought... Uh, <clears throat> Chair? Yes, uh, uh, Bantlamini? CPU is here too. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> uh, 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 good evening and welcome. Thank you, thank you, Chair. I, I think the minister should be in in the, in the next few minutes now. They should be. Yes, at, yes. At, 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 yes, sir. yes, sir. I've, I've already indicated that the, the, the minister will uh, join us and that I will delay the meeting for uh, some few minutes. Um, uh, because she is the one who must present and then invite uh, the, the, the briefing. Yes, sir. Th thank you, Chair. Thank, thank you, you sir. so much. Thank you so much. Um, uh, General Sangweni, the, uh, Chief uh, Jobs, good evening, Chair, members of the committee. Uh, yes, I'm online, but I'm uh, an observer. The as you indicated, the Chief of the SNDF is. Um, uh, the one who uh, maybe is still struggling with with connectivity. Okay, no, no, it's fine. Um, and I thought I saw the deputy minister um, online. I'm, I may be wrong. Uh, uh, Good evening, uh, Chairperson. Good evening. <laughs> Good evening, DM. Uh, thank, yes. thank you. I All am right. in the house. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you very much. Colleagues, um, <clears throat> okay. Well, I think that then it takes care of, of the delegation on the part of, of, of the department. And um, we can then uh, move to deal with the issue. But as I said, uh, uh, the minister uh, will be working in it anytime. Uh, to take us uh, through the, the, the issues. Um, I'm here, uh, Chairperson. Thank you very much, Minister, thank and you. welcome. Uh, we deliberately delayed uh, the meeting after you had uh, requested so, um, because you had other engagements uh, earlier. Minister, I thought it, it's, it's, we should uh, uh, let you uh, lead the present on, on the letter of, of the president and, and then invite uh, the, the, the chief of the SNDF uh, to uh, Lord, uh, take us through the, the briefing. Um, we've welcomed all the members and, and thank all of them for their attendance uh, this evening. And the co-chair has indicated that uh, she would be Lord Shed as from uh, 7 uh, p.m. So I would then in that case uh, uh, run uh, the meeting. And the minister, uh, just before I see a hand on the screen, um, uh, Caswell. I don't know who she is. All right. Minister, the request is, is that you put your audio on when you, you uh, present as you normally do, uh, because the, the meeting is captured live. Uh, over to you, Minister. Thank you, Chairperson. Thank you, Chairperson and honorable members. Um, honorable Chairperson, I'm sorry for, for being late. I've just come out of another meeting. Honorable Co-Chairpersons of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense and Military Veterans, 
Honorable Chaba and Honorable Chabeling, members of the Joint Standing Committee on Defense, Chief of Joint Operations, Lieutenant General Sangweni, and accompanying delegation. We are appearing before you today, Chairperson, the Honorable Members, to brief you on the South African National Defense Force deployment to Mozambique as part of the SADAC mission in, of SAMI. For our own purposes, we've named it Operation Vigela, henceforth. The Joint Standing Committee on Defense is already in possession of the letter of notification for the deployment in accordance with the Constitution, Section 201, wherein Parliament must be informed of such deployment when it is taking place and what the financial implications are thereof. Chairperson and honorable members, the president duly signed letters to the speaker of the National Assembly and the chairperson of the National Council of Provinces respectively. In addition, the Joint Standing Committee on Defense Corps chairpersons have also been served with such letters. The president's minutes authorizing the deployment was also duly signed, enabling the deployment to be underway. Chairperson, the deployment of the members of the South African National Defense Force comprised a total strength of 1,495 personnel at a cost of 984,368,057. This will be made up of various elements across the services and divisions of the South African National Defense Force. It must also be recalled that the decision to deploy was taken by the SADA heads of state and government on the 23rd of June, 2021 in Maputo. Other SADAC member states will also be part of the two contributing countries, notably Zimbabwe, Tanzania, and Mozambique and Botswana. These will be in addition to the non-SADAC member states and some beyond the continent. Chairperson and honorable members, we must indicate that the deployments should have occurred some time ago before the conflict escalated to the level at, at which it is. Of critical importance is that we needed to satisfy the requirements that the host country, Mozambique, enters into a status of forces agreement, SOFA, with SADAC and troop contributing countries for this mission. It would at this point call upon, I would at this point call upon the chief I had to say uh, the General Mapanya is here and, and together with General uh, Sangweni, who is responsible for joint ops. I will then uh, at this point call on them to, to present to you uh, the report, after which we will be ready to engage with the Joint Standing Committee on Defense and Military Veterans and uh, this would not be deemed to be fit and last uh, deploying deployment. And we shall keep the parliament duly informed from time to time, Chairperson. I thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister, for your, um, uh, your introduction. And um, may I now uh, duly invite uh, the chief of the SNDF or um, the chief uh, Lieutenant General uh, Sangweni, uh, CJ Op, Ops. Thank you, Chair and members of the committee and Minister of Defense and Military Veterans. Um, I request that the presentation be run from your site. Uh, Pat, there is a request. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, thanks.
Thank, thank you, uh, Pat. Chair, firstly, let me uh, reflect um, that the presentation is, is basically um, confirming what the minister has uh, submitted to the committee in terms of um, the deployment to uh, Mozambique. Basically, as you can see, the, the introduction, uh, the Republic of Mozambique is confronted with a high level of insecurity and instability in certain parts of the country, which will be basically uh, the North. And then there's a terrorist group. Chairperson, maybe, my, uh, uh, General, my apologies. Chairperson, I'm not quite sure if it's only on my side that I don't see the um, video of, uh, of General Sanguini. Uh, and whether his video is not switched on. I know that you have requested that videos must be switched on. Oh, General, um, I think your, your, your video is off. Uh, may I request that you switch it on? Thank you, Chair. I'll attempt, uh, but the signal this side might uh, give uh, problems. That's why we, we normally uh, do not use the video. Let me try. Okay. Please try, or you can just go as far as you can go. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, as I was, um, I'll proceed with the introduction. Um, we are saying uh, concerning a high number of civilians and security force members have been um, killed and communities displaced, as well as the capacity of the security forces of Mozambique is stretched and struggling to cope. Uh, the threat of the insurgency and instability is feared to spread to other areas of the SADAP region. Furthermore, in terms of the situation, the SADAP has been seized with discussions at various levels over the past uh, years to find a solution to the worrying security situation in Mozambique. And then several meetings and discussions have been held as well as consultation uh, by the SADAC structures and other multilateral, multilateral fora of the African Peace and Security Architecture, the APSA to address the situation. As we are quite aware, members of the committee, that uh, the SADAC Extraordinary Summit of Heads of State and Government that was held in Maputo on the 23rd of June 2021, ultimately arrived at a decision to approve a regional response um, and assistance to the Republic of Mozambique involving the deployment of a SADAC standby force mission to the Republic of Mozambique. Um, with the name of SAMIM, abbreviation of SAMIM. That decision for a regional, regional response um, was directed in terms of the structure for this static response that there will be a military deployment in line with scenario six of the African Union peace support operations framework, whereby during on scenario six, there'll be a deployment of a rapid deployable deployment capability, a RTC for an initial period of three months. After the three months, then there'll be continuous um, assessment of the security situation, which might then maybe lead to a possible follow-up deployment under scenario five, which is a multidimensional force, and more in the line of peacekeeping where um, the multidimensional force, it, it is military, it is the police, it is civilians, uh, mainly in the humanitarian um, environment. Again, the heads of state 
directed that the response must include the assistance with logistical support and training of the Mozambique security establishment. Now, out of um, that decision of the SADAP case of state, um, for the Republic of South Africa, the president of the Republic was part of the decision and he directed the SNDF to contribute to the effort. The concept of the entire effort required that such that member states had to, have to provide capabilities for the deployment for a joint regional response and in the form of a multinational force capability, the deployment of a multinational force capability. The minister had indicated um, there are other member states of the SADAC who are part of the SADAC mission in Mozambique. The concept of um, this effort, furthermore, was that the member states have to consider availing the force elements for deployment in line with the SADAC standby force pledge commitments. As we are aware that there is a SADAC standby force um, structure where all member states of uh, SADAC are part of the pledged um, capabilities for eventualities when SADAC has to uh, respond to a situation. And furthermore, the concept also directs us that um, the response has to be conducted within the standing African Union Peace Support Oper Operations Framework, which um, guides us in terms of the different scenarios, scenario six, scenario five, four, three, and um, downwards. Now, particularly in terms of force employment for the SANDF, our effort is conducted under the name of Operation Vikela. Op Vikela. Vikela, uh, translated in English, uh, indi uh, indicates that it is protection or protect. Our first employment um, is that three of our officers were appointed to serve in the Samim Regional Coordinating Mechanism, the RCM. The RCM is a structure which, a high level structure, which is responsible uh, for SADAC and to SADAC to conduct an uh, oversight, monitoring and assessment of the situation and uh, give the necessary report and feedback and um, proposals to the secretariat for consideration by the head of states in terms of whether the situation is, is progressing positively or negatively. It is that structure will then recommend for decisions of the secretariat, whether we remain at, um, the effort remains at scenario six of the rapid global capability or it then migrates to scenario five of a multidimensional force in a more peacekeeping role. Furthermore, also two officers of the RSA are appointed to serve as um, one of them as the force commander of Samim, another staff officer also appointed as chief of staff of um, Samim. There are also other 10 RSA officers who are appointed to serve in the Samim Force headquarters as staff officers. Furthermore, in terms of our force employment, as part of the capabilities of the RDC, it is a maritime effort as well as strategic intelligence force elements that are deployed for scenario six response jointly with other capabilities of other member states. 
the committee will to take note that in terms of the employment with the numbers that we have been approved, we also have employed the composite landlord battalion, which is on standby for possible migration to scenario five response um, in a peacekeeping role, if and when it is desired or if and when a decision is, is taken that the effort should migrate to scenario five. The employment is for an initial period of three months, 90 days, according to the prescripts. And the maximum number of personnel is 1,495. And the appreciated associated financial costs totaling um, 984 million. 368,000 as um, reflected in the employment papers. For this effort, the SNDF is guided by the Department of Defense and the SNDF is guided by the legal framework um, based on the RSA being a member of the international community and a member state of the South African, Southern African Development Community, SADA. Also the RSA president participated in the decision of the head of state and government summit held in Maputo on the 23rd of 2021. Furthermore, we are also guided by section 201, subsection two of the RSA constitution, which provides for the employment of the National Defense Force for service in fulfillment of its international obligations to international bodies and other states. I conclude, Chair. Uh, thank you very much, uh, colleagues. Uh, <clears throat> thank you very much, uh, General, for, for, for the presentation. And um, the numbers, it's uh, 1,495 uh, soldiers. Uh, this deployment adds to uh, uh, boots that are already um, in various uh, missions as part of various missions as part of our international um, obligations. These being um, uh, the deployment uh, to the Democratic uh, Republic of Congo. Um, as part of the UN's uh, organization uh, stabilization uh, mission and uh, 200 members of the SNDF uh, to the Mozambique uh, channel uh, to deter and prevent uh, piracy. Um, uh, you know, uh, and then the last but not least, it's um, the internal deployments, um, Operation uh, Prosper, uh, where the president released up to 25,000 uh, soldiers, and then the, and the standing deployment um, as part of Operation uh, Corona for border uh, safeguarding. We have about uh, 15 uh, subunits uh, participating uh, there. Uh, colleagues, I now uh, open the platform uh, for discussion. I already see two hands, uh, then Mr. Mare and then Mr. Raider. Uh, over to you, colleagues, in that order. Thanks. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, and thank you very much for your observation, also with regards to our current um, deployment uh, obligation or employment obligations. Uh, I want to start off by, by thanking uh, General uh, C.J. Ops for, for the presentation and the information. I, my first question is maybe not to, to the General, but maybe to the Minister. Um, I know that the letter has been dated the 23rd of, of July, and somehow we only received it on the 27th, which is one day more than a week um, since we know that it was, it is general knowledge that the 
that the South African troops also already arrived in Mozambique uh, on the 19th. So I just wanted to understand um, that 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 process and and why the letter is dated only the 23rd, while the troops already arrived on the 19th, and we only it was only published in the ACT on the 27th. I think the evening, late mm -hmm. evening of the 27th. So that is just a concern of mine. I know that we have raised it in the past. So, but then secondly, in terms of the presentation, and I just wanted to come back to to the scenario five and scenario six. Um, and I am going to ask the question, uh, see, seeing that Botswana has already confirmed that they are sending, I think, 295. Zimbabwe has already confirmed that they are sending possibly 300. We know that there's a thousand of Rwanda. So it seems like it is, it is not that the numbers are not that confidential. So I just wanted to understand the 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 current um, uh, uh, force that we've got there and the numbers, because it's all over the show that the convoys um, that has travelled from South Africa to to uh, Mozambique uh, that seems to be a hell of a lot more for for you know the current fifteen uh, uh, officers. And we know that the special forces has uh, arrived there with their own equipment. So, so uh, I'm, I'm just wondering whether you can can help and assist us to understand. The special forces are there with their own equipment. They've arrived um, by air, and 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 now there's been a huge convoy traveling to Mozambique. Um, but it seems like we are still in scenario six, and that convoy very much looked like. Scenario five to me. So, so where do we stand with that? How much do we actually have um, uh, our strength in Mozambique currently? And and what is if if they are not if, if they are not being deployed in terms of scenario five? What is then the purpose on the object of all these equipment being being uh, transported to Mozambique? I also want to find out that in the initial indication was that. SADC requires at least one submarine and then certain strength on, on, the, on the sea. We only have got the strike craft, which is basically an, an uh, outshore patrol vessel at this stage with no capabilities to, to have helicopters on board. So I just wanted to understand that as well, given that we have got a frigate that, that, that could possibly be used and we know which has, has, has been used in the past for, for Operation Copper. So if you can elaborate on, on that indications and that numbers, um, also given you know, the, the, the 1,450, 95, whether that will be the total strength if the Composite Landward Battalion um, has, has been deployed, whether that is part of that. Uh, and then we also need to understand there's basically only two months left of this initial three months period. For, for just close to a billion rand. Um, are we working like in, like in, in, in the DRC on, on, on a deployment times three in terms of this total strength? Is the 1,495 that total strength? In other words, divided by three, how much is actually going to be in Mozambique? Or is it the 1,495 times three? Uh, or is it times two? Um, if you can, if you can just explain that to us, then I also want to know from you um, the terms of reference of our soldiers going there. I think that is quite important because we need to know how how are they going to work in, in terms of their terms of reference and their mandate within the SADC um, force. Is it South Africans on their own, Botswanans on their own? Um, uh, people from, from the other uh, SADC states on their own, typically what we experience and have in, in, the, in the DRC, or is it going to be a combined force and how will that work? And then also vis-a-vis -vis the Rwand Rwandan forces that seems to be op operating independently and then also the Mozambicans that seems to be operating independently. So if you can, um, uh, uh, Chairperson, I have got other questions, but I will... I will stop here just to give other other colleagues also the the opportunity, 
and and then I will, you know, with your with your um, with your agreement that I will then come in later afterwards if my other questions have not been on, uh, uh, put to the to to the panel. Um, that I can just add that, but I just don't want to take up all the questions for myself. Um, you know, I hope that is okay with you. No, no, it, it is okay with me. But let me do this. Um, maybe some of the questions will be answered in in the replies. Let me just quickly quickly invite uh, the minister um, uh, to deal with uh, the questions. Um, she will decide which one she takes herself and uh, and and those that um, she would uh, refer to uh, the the uh, CJ ops uh, honorable minister thank you very much chairperson and thank you honorable members thank you honorable member for your questions the question which i will attempt to respond to because a lot of the questions raised here chairperson and honorable members will appreciate are very operational. So what I will focus on is the date of the letter which was sent to, to parliament. What I have here, I know, is the date of the employment of the, of the force, the date, on which the letter was written and sent to both the speaker and the chairperson is the date of the 23rd chairperson of July. However, Chair, you recall that this team, this group should have deployed to Mozambique on the 15th of July. And I think I did indicate in our last meeting, Chair, that much as they were supposed to deploy on the 15th of July, with the heads of state having taken a decision in a summit in June, the teams could not uh, deploy to Mozambique before the, uh, the status of forces agreement had been signed, which is a legal document for any country where troops are being deployed, which they must sign in order to protect, to provide legal protection to the forces which are about to be deployed. So on the 15th of July, none of the countries which were, which were uh, uh, deployed into into Mozambique did deploy. None of them deployed because we were then waiting for this, uh, for this uh, status of forces, which state of forces was signed on the 14th of July it, it, on the eve of the actual deployment date. And just to say that initially, what, what uh, my understanding of what is being deployed is what is called the rapid deployment capability, which consists of three countries. South Africa is the first commander of the, of the team, and Botswana is deputizing South Africa, and the chief of staff again is South Africa. Now, in terms of the numbers being raised by Honorable Murray of the different countries which have deployed and the numbers of, of troops they have deployed, I would not be able to explain to you how those who were planning the, the operation or the exercise, how they reached such, a, such a numbers. But I can safely say that what we have uh, submitted to parliament is the number which is uh, reflected in the letters. And it may not necessarily be everybody who is already in Mozambique, but the chief joint, joint ops can talk to that. Initially, you'll recall that we, there was a deployment of the first elements and then a deployment of the second elements. And now, I. To joint ops 
can go on and, and tell you about where exactly they are. With regards to the convoys, I'm not aware of the convoys. Uh, joint ops would also have that information, uh, honorable chairperson. However, I am aware that when the deployment of the, both the first and the second elements occurred, the, the C-130s were used. Hence the pictures of the footage of the C-130s was all over the place in the media. It is because they had used the C-130s and therefore left from the Waterkloof airport and landed in some airport where they would be deploying. With regards to the deployment with other forces from, the, from within SADAC, I want to remind honorable members that this is a SADAC deployment. Of course, the SADAC deployment does not prevent Mozambique as a country, as a sovereign state, from then requesting on a bilateral basis for another country outside of uh, SADAC to deploy to their country. As far as my understanding is concerned, uh, Rwanda is currently deployed there on a bilateral basis with Mozambique. They are not part of the SADAC deployment. But of course, if a country then decides that there will be a need to have other, other forces from a different country other than SADAC, it depends on that country. And in this instance, SADAC has no, um, has no role to play in it, cannot prescribe to, to a sovereign state what it is that the sovereign state should do. What we are satisfied about is the fact that from now, having deployed the rapid deployment capability, we will now later then, we will also have what is called and what has been in place for years, that which is called the SADAC standby force, uh, which has never been deployed before. However, has had several, two exercises, I think, as a, a region. So therefore you are talking here about countries which have an understanding of how because they talk, they've exercised with them, with among with themselves before. So you have a, definitely a force that understands one another's doctrines, a force that would be well equipped to do what they are deployed for. And of course, I would imagine that if there's another force other than the one from SADA, they would find ways of collaborating with them. I don't know. The Mozambicans, I hear you are saying they are deployed on their own. If Mozambicans are deployed on their own, it, it would be obviously important for Mozambique as well, as part of the region and as part of the country which is being assisted here, that it would collaborate with the SADAC forces, sub SADAC standby force, but it would also collaborate with uh, the, uh, the, uh, the other force which they have agreed with on a bilateral basis. Now, Honorable Mare, you also mentioned uh, Op Corona and Op Prosper. Those are continuing, they are there. Uh, we deployment internally here, we have not done away with because of the deployment of Mozambique in Mozambique. As you know, indeed, the original number was 25,000, which was uh, deployed internally here. And the papers sub submitted to parliament talked to the number 25,000. And as we are talking right now, we papers are on the way to the president and will be sent to you, to parliament, for us to reduce the number 25 down to 10,000 so that the focus of the troops is purely on the provinces, which are still calm but uh, volatile, namely KZN, Western Cape, because you know that in the Western Cape, there's now 
a, a taxi conflict, even though we are aware that there's an agreement which has been reached amongst uh, within the taxi group, different taxi groups, and then the other uh, province will be Gauteng, which is also very calm and quiet. However, still, because there had been that, uh, that uh, violence here um, two weeks ago or three weeks ago, then we would still keep some troops. So the fact that we have deployed to Mozambique, honorable members, has not at all compromised our deployment internally here. And I thank you, Chairperson, and I thank you, Honorable Marie, for the questions. And the rest of the questions, I will leave them to the Chief of Joint Operations, Chair. Yes, no, thank you very much. Um, CJ Jones, uh, CJ Ops, um, may I invite you to deal with those that you can uh, deal with? Yeah. Obviously, we'll indicate um, mm -hmm. if the questions uh, are, um, you know, calling for operational um, information that you cannot share. So we'll hear from you. Over to you, uh, Lieutenant uh, General Sanguini. Thank you, Chair, and the members of the committee. Um, I'll attempt to respond to the uh, questions by Honorable Marae. Um, and I, in terms of the total strength of, of the forces, no debt uh, will not be shared in this platform. And um, I, I, I believe and have an understanding that the members of the committee of um, defense and military veterans are quite aware of, of operational and military protocol and sensitivity. And I, 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 I do believe and hope that we will respect um, uh, that and um, the necessary information which is relevant and required will be provided. And it can be provided on a separate um, a fora if required. The other question was about what elements uh, do we have uh, in the mission area? As I indicated in the presentation, maritime elements we have assets are deployed and landward elements are deployed. And yes, I confirm again, we are deployed uh, under scenario six, which uh, of the AU PSO, um, which uh, directs that we conduct that in the form of a rapid deployment capability. Uh, it does not really determine what um, assets you have to and the numbers. But what is deployed now, it is uh, SADAC elements under scenario six. And that deployment, the current deployment uh, under scenario six is in line with the approach and concept of the deployment as um, according to the plans of the SATAP. Honorable uh, Mare uh, asked a question um, regarding whether all SATAP force elements uh, are we working together or will be working on our own. We, as I indicated, we are deploying as part of a multinational force of all other SATAC member states that are, are deploying uh, combined joint multinational force. And uh, the comparison with MONUSCO, it is similar or the same. Even in MONUSCO, the RSA is deployed as a force element 
in a combined joint multinational force approach. We work with all other deployed uh, force elements of other member states in MONUSCO, as well as uh, here in, in Samim. On the issue of um, the Mozambique uh, Defense Force, uh, whether inquiring whether they are deployed with us on their own, the Samim Force elements and all SADAC Force elements that are deployed in Samim are working together with the security establishment of Mozambique as the host nation, as per the normal practice uh, of the African Union peace support operations framework, and also in line with the UN peace support operations framework. Um, the host nation, we work together with the host nation and in collaboration with the host nation. I submit to uh, Thank you very much, uh, General. Uh, I will take uh, Mr. Raida Mafanya, uh, Ms. Bukas, uh, uh, the co-chair, Shelley Embe, uh, in that order. Uh, Mr. Raider, uh, will be followed. Thank you very much, Chair. Chair, I will try to be brief. If I can just ask, first of all, in terms of the... Um, uh, so before I start my comments, please, if I can just uh, voice our gratitude to the men and women that uh, are representing us in Mozambique and wish them all a speedy and safe return. Uh, our hearts are with you. Um, Chair, I think that my, my first question really relates to the, the, the expenditure that's happening on this uh, uh, deployment, on, on this operation. Um, and I know that when we do operations jointly with the United Nations, there's always a compensation that comes back to us, and it's worked out on a fairly complex uh, formula. Um, when we are deployed with SEDEC, or as a, in, in operation with SEDEC, is there any such uh, compensation that comes back to us um, and if there is just, um, uh, if, if we can maybe, I, I'm sure we won't have details of it now, but if we can have that detail given to us um, at a later stage as to exactly how and when that, that, that will be calculated, um, compensation for our activities. That's the first question, Chair, thank you. Uh, the second question is that, um, you know, I believe that there was quite a big contact that took place um, in the last three days. Uh, where there was substantial success reported um, by the, the SEDEC troops um, that are currently operating. And I was wondering if, if, if there's an update, if, if that successful operation um, has, has uh, made the three-month uh, period more likely to be the end line, or are we still seeing ourselves as probably having to extend this, uh, this employment of, of, of our troops into Mozambique beyond the the three month period. Um, the next question to is just, I think it, it, it was it was asked and, and answered. I, I wanted to know if we are, uh, if the Mozambican Defense Force is actually working in conjunction uh, with the SEDEC forces. Um, I think it, it has largely been answered, um, but it wasn't specifically said the Defense Force, it just said operative. So if I can say specifically, do we have people that know the territory working with, with our forces on the ground? I'll leave it at that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Mafanya. Uh, uh, thank you very much, Chair, the Minister, our colleagues, uh, the General Sangwin. The, the issue of insurgency in Northern Mozambique started as early as 2017. And then in this committee, we have highlighted the issue that there need, there's a need for some intervention. It was only after the Palma attack, West Coast of foreigners, including one of our own who died there, then uh, all static was sensitized towards that issue. So the issue is that my question is more political that uh, with the counterpart of SADC, having known since 2017 that there are people, the locals that were being killed with impunity and nothing was done until up to this stage. What has been the problem with SADC? So probably that one could be answered by, by, by the minister, uh, whereby we, and the issue of insurrections in the continent, whereby you, they become more economical, in a sense that whenever there are resources found in different countries, 
there are we are bound to face war in different fields and areas where these resources are found by multinationals. Is it the case that uh, when ordinary people die, it doesn't matter that much, whereby we have to put more resources to stabilize the area for the sake of the resources or the riches or of that of, 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 our, of the continent, then it becomes an issue again there. Now on the issue of rapid deployment force from our side, from South Africa, is it permanently in place? Because history has taught us that at some point we delay to act because of certain elements that we are not aware of. And also I would like to, though it might not be answered in this platform, because the, in war situations, in military intelligence is the key to give reports to the minister, whereby also we are informed what is the status, the sort of uh, weaponry is needed to be deployed in such instances. Number three, the people, the, 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 the Al Shabaab or um, ASWJ, popularly known as Al Shabaab now, what sort of Weapon three do they have? Where do they get the funding? Who is equipping them? So that we know how, where you have to stop the insurrections and the equipping of uh, these people whereby uh, we are currently faced with this. The idea is that had, we, had it been responded earlier on a SADC, we could have saved a lot of money from all different countries. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Bakers. Thank you, Chair. Chair, the, the minister or, already responded to two of my questions. The one of the contingent of soldiers already deployed in Mozambique, and then also the one of the, the impact of the deployment in Mozambique uh, uh, current situation. I just have one further question, Chair, and is that, uh, do we have enough uh, transport aircrafts to support the Mozambique DRC and local operations in case there's a need for a rapid deployment arise? Thank you, Chair. Um, you mean DRC or Mozambique? Um, and yeah. local operations, and our local operations, Chair. All right, okay, thanks. And uh, Miss, uh, Mr. I mean, Honorable uh, Chamberlain, uh, co chair, and then Shelembe. There's uh, Motsomai. Um, uh, Mr. Chamberlain? Okay. Mr. Shelembe? We'll skip uh, Mr. Chamberlain. Um, and then come back to him. Uh, uh, thank you, Chairperson. Uh, I won't be able, I mean, uh, to uh, switch my uh, video camera on uh, due to the area where I am right now. But uh, Chairperson, uh, firstly, I mean, as we all know, I mean, I can, that, see, uh, I can see the area is dark, it's pitch black. <laughs> Okay, no, thank you. Thank you, uh, Chairperson. Chairperson, uh, I think a number of uh, people, especially those who are located or situated uh, along the border of Mozambique will be happy, I mean, to see that uh, we have uh, members of the SNTF deployed, I mean, uh, to Mozambique, because we know that some of our people, I mean, are, are having the businesses there in Mozambique. And since we're not, I mean, um, you know, acting on what was happening, it was uh, making their life difficult, I mean, to continue investing or making business in Mozambique. Uh, Chairperson, I think uh, Honorable Ryder has, I mean, uh, touched a little bit on my question of uh, the compensation. I'm looking, I mean, to the issue of that uh, 984 million rand. Uh, if, I mean, uh, this money uh, is paid back, and uh, if it is paid back, um, how do we see or how are we enable to see that the money is paid back. And secondly, Chairperson, if this money is coming from our own allocation or is coming from a, se a separate budget or national treasurer, I would appreciate if it is coming from our own allocation, if maybe I can get the clarity that um, 
how do we get back, I mean, that money if possible? And then uh, the minister has commented saying, uh, if we acted on time to the situation uh, in Mozambique, uh, it wouldn't be like uh, it is now. Um, I'm trying to find out who's to blame, I mean, in this situation. Is it because RSA uh, responded late or is it because the Mozambique government, I mean, um, uh, did not, I mean, um, you know, uh, you know, I mean, um, speed up the process of signing the agreement of uh, the status of the force. Um, yeah, person, if uh, one, I mean, uh, can be assisted because it's like now we acted, uh, we did not act on time if I had uh, the minister correctly. That must be clarified so that we know if any damage has been caused there is not because we did not act on time. As one of the speakers, uh, Mr. Mafanya, raised that this thing, uh, I mean, uh, started long time as 2017, but we are only acting now. I'm trying to find out whether we are responsible for the delay in acting or it is because of the government in, in Mozambique. Thank you, Chairperson. Okay. Th th thank you very much, um, uh, Honorable Nchabeleng. Uh, I will then uh, go back to the minister and, and the chief uh, and, and CJ Ops, uh, before I move to uh, uh, Motsamai and the Inkosi Tabakul. Uh, over to Nchabeleng, before I invite the minister and CJ Ops. Yeah, thanks, Chairperson. Uh, my, my bandwidth is compromised, so I'll keep my uh, camera off. Um, I've missed out on some of the inputs that and questions that were asked by the members, but uh, following the responses from the minister and responses from um, the generals, then it tells from General Sanguin, uh, I'm able to follow uh, what questions were asked just from those answers. I just want to check, um, because as the Joint Standing Committee, our other concern in terms of deployment is the safety of our, uh, you know, of our men and women in camouflage. Uh, are they having equipment that are relevant to the to the mission that they are sent for in in Mozambique? <clears throat> and uh, I just want to check also uh, the Operation Copper. Is it uh, somehow are they linked? Can we? Can, op can the submarines deployed in the channel be able to respond and help uh, the ones that we have in Cap in Cabo Delgado? Is it are, are there those kind of things? I'm not sure about the finances and if that question was asked. Uh, if we will, where does the nearly billion run come from? Is it from treasure? Is it taken from the budget of the department? or is it going to be funding from the AU? Um, yeah, <clears throat> and um, I've seen on this uh, WhatsApp and the YouTube uh, videos, uh, our troops moving into Mozambique, and it really gave me pride somehow that we have done it before in Mozambique, uh, when we our National Defense Force rescued Mozambicans during, during the flood, and I hope that our men in, and women in camouflage will do us pride like they did then. Um, I've seen trucks carrying uh, equipment, and they did not look like that they are military vehicles. Of course, they were carrying our 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 <coughs> our equipment. Um, but were they rented or do we have cars that are not branded as our army? Uh, uh, we have seen in Natal the performance of the C-130. Um, and now it is in Mozambique. Is there any other, uh, you know, something like uh, for air cover for our forces when they are there? Those are some of the things that I like to know. And uh, the generals, can decide not to answer some of the questions because uh, some of our questions 
may deal with operational uh, matters, Chairperson. But I think the uh, members are uh, exercising self-constraint in terms of asking questions and asking relevant questions that are relevant to this kind of meeting, given the situation we are in. Uh, thank you for now, Chairperson. Thank you very much, um, uh, Honorable Koche. Uh, may I invite the, the minister and uh, yeah, the minister for now? I'll come back to you, uh, Mr. Motsumai. Uh, Honorable Motsumai. Um, all right. Honorable Motomai. Your, your, your network is, uh, is interrupting you. Yeah, sir, we can hear nothing. Absolutely nothing. Okay. Be, uh, because there's only, Yes, Minister. Yes, Minister. Okay. There's, there's only oh, one oh. hand left. There's only one le hand left. Uh, Let me just no, this. No, let me take the inconsiderable call, Minister, so that you, you because there's the only hand uh, remaining uh, with uh, uh, Honorable Motsumai experiencing the challenges that he is experiencing currently. Uh, can I take you, the visitor? Uh, uh, thank you so much, the visitor. Th thank you, Chairperson. Uh, good evening to you, uh, all members of the portfolio. Co of the, of the portfolio committee and uh, as well as the, the, the minister and deputy minister. Uh, uh, Chairperson, mine is just to ask just for a, just to establish Chairperson, I wonder if this is the work of, of the intelligence out there. We've been uh, 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 hearing in the news about the unstable condition in, in, in Mozambique driven by the Al Shabaab. Are they doing if 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 are they doing this based on the religious uh, point of view to drive out uh, the their beliefs, or are they doing this simply because there is that uh, mining of, of of gas in there, so that maybe they they could uh, have their hand in it, or, or so to say, just to, to, to bring in their own uh, uh, companies to to mine that, that, that gas in Mozambique. Is it business related or is it just religious uh, 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 beliefs that uh, drive them to force the people out there just to, to, to abide by their own religion? That's, that's the question I wanted just to ask you, President. Uh, thank you very much. Um, Honorable Minister, I think we are done with the um... Uh, uh, with, with questions, may I now invite you uh, back again? And uh, over to you. Thank you very much, Honorable Chair and Honorable Members, for the questions. Chairperson, let me start with uh, the issue raised by Honorable Ryder, but also raised by Honorable Shalembe which is whether there is any compensation for the money which we will be spending on this uh, operation. Just to say that, Chair, firstly, let me clarify that this is not an AU or a UN mission. However, it is a SADC mission. And therefore, SADC as a region has an obligation to fund it's standby force. I, I want to start by clarifying that, that whatever it is which will be spent by the forces on this deployment will come from the SADAC region. That's, that's the first question I think I should. Then the question raised by Honorable Mafanya that Mozambique has no as far back as 2017 about the nature of the threat which is facing them. It is true, Honorable uh, Chairperson. However, Chairperson, Mozambique only confirmed to the region of SADAC in 20, 
2020 about the nature of the threat they are confronted with. It is for that reason that you saw a number of meetings of the Troika where both the chiefs of defense staff, ministers, and then heads of state coming together and discussing the challenges in Mozambique. And of course, it is only in December that a special and extraordinary SADC summit was convened for purposes of receiving a report on the recommendations from the chiefs as to what exactly needs to be done. And based on that, the Troika heads of state then recommended to summit that there should be some form of intervention so that um, Mozambicans can also feel safe. So yes, indeed, they've known for quite some time, but the only time uh, when SADAC got to be informed officially, I'm talking about official, because it's not as though uh, our, our forces in the region from the different countries, even through the intelligence structures of, of, the, of the defense forces. It's not as though they were not aware issues have been raised, but of course you have to, you are, you have to wait for the country consent to be the one which acknowledges that there is a problem and what the nature of the problem is in order for you to then take a decision to make an intervention. That Demafania raises an issue around uh, on, on the equipment required. That's an issue that can be responded to by the generals. But Honorable Bukas raises a matter about whether we do have enough uh, assets which will service our mission to the DRC, to Mozambique and of course local. I can say, Honorable Bukas, that as you know, all of us, that basically the Defense Force does not have adequate assets. However, it has had to learn to be agile and learn to use what it has in its possession. So whatever the demands, it has an obligation to, the Defense Force has an obligation to move with speed and do what is required of them. But enough, we can never say there are enough assets for these kinds of deployments. Then there's an issue about whether, who acted late from Tatema Fani. Is it us, is it no? Let me clarify myself once more. When the heads of state took the decision on the 22nd or 23rd of June, I'm sorry, to deploy the SADAC standby force, they gave the standby force a deadline of the 15th of July. They said by the 15th of July, the forces should be on the ground. But of course, right up until then, of course, there was preparation all round. But of course, at the end of it all, there is no way in which you can deploy to a country when the country has not as yet signed together with the region, the status of forces agreement. Status of forces agreement obviously should have been signed way ahead to enable the forces to move in exactly on the 15th of July. So there was no movement exactly on the 15th of July because right up until the 14th in the evening, there hadn't been a signing of the sofa. Nonetheless, I do want to state the fact that South Africa was the first in the region to move the first elements and then Botswana was the next one to follow. I now know that they have deployed. The, the day Shabeleng raises a matter about 
the safety of our troops. Well, Chairperson, I can only say all of us and the and the and the and the of course safety of our troops in the context of the equipment. I, I would I would want to say that uh, I think that there is no country, even even with all the challenges which we have in the republic, I don't think there's a country that can actually deploy its forces to such a mission without proper preparations. We may have limited maybe resources, but obviously the safety of our troops is what is paramount to both the region and to the troop contributing countries. Um, on convoys to Mozambique, whether these were logistical, I suspect these were logistical supplies, uh, and Daten Chabeleng raises the color. I think the general can respond to that. But I would then jump to attempt to respond to a matter raised by Ingosi Utebekulu on whether this is an economic or religious uh, conflict which uh, is being dealt with here. I would say it probably is both. However, you know that there are gas deposits in Mozambique, particularly in the area where the conflict is, then there is also, of course, we do receive information that you have uh, elements who may have been recruited by extremists, religious extremists, and, and therefore you cannot rule it, out, rule it out that it's a combination of both. It could be that those extremists themselves are in the main interested in the economic or so natural resources which are there in Mozambique right now. Hence, they are focused in those areas. But lastly, Chairperson, I do want to say, Chairpersons and Honorable Members, that wherever the, a need arises for deployment, wherever, wherever there are operations conducted by the Defense Force, those operations are intelligence-based. So we have operations which will be informed by intelligence which has been gathered by the forces on the ground. And as we can say now, we know we have said, told you about the numbers of countries which are deployed there, and therefore the intelligence capacity will come from those forces which are deployed there as well. There is not a single operation which will be carried out without the necessary intelligence informing that operation. I thank you, Honorable Chairperson. Those mm -hmm. which I have not responded to would be issues which can be responded to by the generals. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, General uh, uh, CJ Ops, uh, over to you, sir. Thank you, Chair. Uh, please allow me to recognize the attendance of the Deputy Minister of Defense and Military Veterans. Furthermore, I'd also like to appreciate the Honorable Ryder and um, the co-chair of the committee, Honorable Nchabeleng, for the encour encouraging words and sentiments of acknowledging um, the efforts and sacrifices by the Republic of South Africa men and women who are sacrificing for peace and stability in the region. And those words of encouragement are much appreciated and we do wish all South Africans can do the same. We are Defense Force of the People, by the people and for the people. Minister, please allow me to 
add to your response to Honorable Bukes regarding the if there are enough air assets. I will say we, as the Republic of Sudan, we do not have. Rather, we need more air assets for the core mandate of the Defense Force, which is to defend the territorial integrity of the country, as well as the secondary mandate um, of humanitarian assistance, disaster management, response, support to other state departments at all times. The air assets of the military are multidimensional. In peace time within the country, they do quite um, a big um, work to assist uh, the people. So we really, not as the Defense Force, but as the country, need more, as it has been seen during disasters uh, of different uh, magnitude. The Honorable Ryder uh, wanted the confirmation when I said that we work together in collaboration with the Mozambique security establishment. Um, that is the Defense Force of Mozambique as well as the police. Uh, it is um, procedural that when there is um, peace support operations, the host country still carries on with their duties as they are still a country in good standing. So their police and the Defense Force are operational and we are working together with them. There was also a further question from the Honorable Writer whether the three months will be enough. Um, we hope so. Everyone should hope that the three months um, will be enough for the situation in Mozambique to be brought back to normality and the situation stabilized. Whether it goes beyond the three months will be determined by the security situation. But all efforts of the force elements of SADAC, uh, SAMIM, are committed to ensure that we achieve the objectives required by the region uh, in a month or two or three. That is why the approach started with a rapid deployable capability of three months. We do hope that um, it will not require much more than that. The Honorable Chabeling asked the question whether OPOPA is part of this effort. Um, actually, the response, the maritime element of this uh, response is tailor-made from Operation Copper. We will all recall that Operation Copper, it is a SADAC um, initiative and an effort of SADAC member states to patrol and control the Mozambican channel. So with this uh, SADAC mission in Mozambique, the maritime element is doing exactly that to address criminality and illegal activities at sea. The question on air support um, in the mission area or on deployment, yes, there is air assets deployed. There are air assets deployed from the various uh, member states that are deployed. As we've indicated, we work um, in a combined and joint effort the assets that are deployed uh, are deployed for all um, forces that are deployed, irrespective of which country. So we do have the uh, assets that are deployed. I submit you. Okay. Thank you very much, uh, colleagues. I, I think we I don't see any, any hand and I had not promised a second round. Uh, Mara, is it ready? It's really urgent. You, um, yes, sir. It's, it's actually very relevant. I think a lot of the, the, the questions have been answered, so I've got not a, a lot to extra request. I understand the sensitivity of the operational matters. 
Um, however, I want to uh, tell the minister and, and CJ Ops and the chief of the SNDF that we are approaching a BRRR process. So somehow we must then have an opportunity to interact, to fully understand the, the actual needs for landward, air and maritime. Um, I think we have agreed the other day in terms of our report on, on Ops Prosper, uh, that, that there are certain elements that we have to take forward and to maybe use the BRRR process to emphasize that. Now, if it is that that billion rand for the first three months will be refunded, and I assume in terms of the, what the minister said, that it will be refunded, which is then very, very good news. Um, but then it means that we have to invest in what is needed to put our soldiers in as safe as possible situation on the ground um, and 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 obviously one would have loved to to get information or somehow get the information that can assist us for instance if we if we required two frigates to operate and we only have got one uh, that means that you know that midlife upgrades of the frigates are very important similar if we need the the, the reef halt there and because of cost or any other reason they only have the oryx there that, that we can support that, uh, but we can only do that if we know the information. So, so somehow my request to you, Chair, and to the Minister and CJ Ops is somehow you, we, we must then create a situation either by providing the information to us or have an opportunity where they can, where they can share that with us. Because, um, uh, you know, if you want a peacekeeping mission, as we've got in the DRC, that is not a three months process. That is probably a two or a three year process. Um, and, 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 and obviously we haven't had that progress feedback in terms of what is experienced on the ground and whether this is seen as a temporary, as a temporary um, uh, intervention. So, so with that said, um, Chair, I, I, I just wanted to leave it there. And, and, and just to know that um, and we must register the fact that we need to know exactly what we are talking about. For instance, just a number on the 1495 uh, and, and comparing that with DRC in terms of the DRC group times three, you know, whether that is the, what, what we are talking about or whether it is different. I know that the, the explanation in terms of DRC and also uh, Corona um, that is shared in, in, in various other meetings with us. So, so if that is sensitive at this stage in terms of Mozambique, I'm not quite sure why it is sensitive. And then also what we need to know, uh, and that will be based on the intelligence, is are they a, 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 a larger threat to our, to our northern borders? So in other words, our 15 companies, is that now adequate or do we need to, to strengthen our security on our land borders, because if there's something expected to flow over to South Africa, we have to be proactive in in providing that uh, that that uh, call a uh, you know wall of of defence force soldiers on on the land borders to make sure that they don't easily come into South Africa. I thank you, sir. Thank, thank you very much. I, I think it's critical that the, the threat be extinguished. Um, you know, right there in, in Mozambique uh, before it spills over into uh, the in, in, into the countries sharing uh, borders with uh, Mozambique, South Africa being uh, one of them. It's a real threat and uh, it is in that context that you would support any intervention to try and, um, you know, suppress it so that uh, we don't um, have to face uh, the situation, uh, you know. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mozumai wanted to raise a point, but for some reason, uh, his gadget uh, failed him. I, I will grant him, uh, he's the only person uh, that uh, I will grant him, uh, you know, exception. Anyway, he's the only hand on the platform. Uh, Mr. Mozumai? Thank you, Chairperson. I don't know whether I'm all right now. 
You, you are all right, sir. You may uh, continue. Okay, sure, sir. And I was a general because Renali Polo is saying that I'm a soul, a tailor or the disability, so I'm more apartheid cover. How do she be a muscle? I don't know the colleges of one at an idea, Shamutile, Ago Mozambique, but seven is the very same cars. Seven is seven is a most South Africa, so grand is she a muscle, I don't know. Ali Momrao had the colloy, the Busuka Mopel by Messi, help are the assays. Mozambique, and uh, Minister, um, I don't know. It's just one last yes, I'll, I'll just, I'll just, I just want to put to correct one matter which has been raised by Honorable Murray because I don't want to be quoted out of context. Okay. I think he did not understand me, Chairperson. Both Honorable Ryder and <clears throat> Honorable Shalembe raised the issue of the budget allocated for this operation. And my response to that was that whatever resources in terms of financial resources which we are spending here are resources which come from SADAC. In other words, the operation itself is funded by SADAC. It is not an operation which is funded by the Republic of South Africa, because the mission is a mission of the SADAC region. I, I just thought I should clarify that because tomorrow it will be said, where is the billion, which uh, nine point something, that's almost a billion. Where is the billion which, uh, which uh, SADAC, whether SADAC has paid us or not and so on. The operation itself, of course, it's important that we write here in South Africa in the papers to parliament approximately what it is that we will spend on the operation, on the money which will be allocated by SADAC to each one of the two contributing countries, Chairperson. I thought I should just clarify that, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Minister. And, uh, uh, Honorable, I'm um, uh, General. Uh, anything to uh, contribute further? Thank you, Chair. Um, there was a question by Honorable Utsamai. Uh, I would have liked to respond to him. Uh, um, to Honorable uh, Mutamai, we are working hard in the National Defense Force to try and rejuvenate the Defense Force. And we are hoping and wishing <clears throat> and putting a plea to the people of South Africa through the parliamentarians that you are engaging with now to support the effort to rejuvenate the defense, the National Defense Force. As we all know, the National Defense Force is required by all the South Africans to support the South African public in times of need. And at this stage, it is known that it is not at the capacity that um, is required for us to respond. We need to rejuvenate and we are trying hard and we hope and expect that the Joint Standing Committee uh, as parliamentarians will influence um, all South Africans 
to support the defense force in this endeavor. I, su I submit. Yeah, th thank you very much. Colleagues, we have come to the end of um, uh, the questions and replies. And um, uh, do I get your support uh, for the steps that uh, the president uh, has taken in uh, together with the other heads of states in, in, in the SADC um, to deal with what uh, is posing as a threat to uh, the countries in, in the regions and, and, and that this threat must be extinguished right at source. Um, I didn't get any, didn't hear any, uh, you know, uh, objection uh, uh, to that. Uh, agreed. Uh, Chairperson, I agree with you fully on that. And that was part of the reason why I made the question in terms of, of equipment like the Roy Falk. I know that the Roy Falk has been used incredibly successful in the DRC to extinguish certain certain um, um, actions and forces and, and behaviors. So, so that was one of the reasons why I've asked that. So I fully support you uh, in that. And, and for that, we need the equipment. Uh, and obviously for that, we need the information so that we can push the budget. Thank you. Yes, no, th th thank you so much. Um, we hear good news that our, the boots on the ground outside are really uh, coming on top of, of the situation. And uh, thanks to a collaboration uh, amongst the different uh, forces in the region. In the region. Colleagues, uh, there being no objection, and uh, we uh, support the president and, and yourself, minister, and uh, there being no any other issue to deal with, uh, it's now uh, incumbent upon me to uh, thank all of you and then agenda meet and then close the meeting. Okay, the meeting. Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, thank minister. Very much. Not the president, chair. The, the thank minister. Chair. Thank, you, chair. thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Large. Thank you, Minister. Thank you all. Recording stopped.